Let's try out this question from 2015. Amy won problem 10. Let f of x be a third degree polynomial. So we have a cubic equation going on. So that's a cubic equation with real coefficients satisfying f of 1. But you're taking absolute value of f of 1, f of 2, f of 3, f of 5, f of 6, f of 7. Realize we do not have f of 4. We're skipping it. Let's keep this in mind. So you're skipping f of 4. And you are going to get 12. And we wish to find the absolute value of f of 0. One thing I thought about, one of the first things that came to my mind when I looked at this question, was that there's really only two ways. Only two ways the graph of the function can go in order for this, in order for this equation to be satisfied. What do I mean by that? Well, if you know how cubic polynomial is going to behave, you know it's going to graph something like this. You can graph something like this. Or of course, you can rotate around. You can go like this, the opposite way. Or you can have just maybe no extrema and go smoothly all the way. Or some something of the sort. You can only have a maximum of two extrema. So that's as much curving as you're going to get when it comes to cubic polynomial. And we want all of these six all of these six absolute values to evaluate to be 12. And one thing to think about, think of a line that's going through y equals to 12 and another line going through y equals to negative 12. What this equation is telling you is that if you graph a cubic polynomial, so let me just graph a random cubic polynomial, six of those points are going to evaluate to either 12 or negative 12. So absolute value of that can be 12. So what this is telling you is that this cubic equation has to intersect, intersect, intersect these one of these two lines six times. So you have to intersect y equals to 12 or y equals to negative 12 six times in total. And obviously that's only intersecting it twice, so that's not going to work. How about going like going like this. Well, it's only intersecting it four times, so that's not going to work. And you can experiment with, with the graph of the function, and you want as much curving as possible, so you want to use this form with two extrema. And pretty quickly, you should find that the only way you're going to intersect it six times is if the graph is going like this. You're intersecting it three times below, and you're intersecting it three times up above. So you know how the graph is going to go. So let me, let me draw this out. So you know your graph is going to be something like this. You know you're going to intersect y equals to 12 three times. So 1, 2, and 3. And y equals to negative 12 three times as well. So that intersecting is three times. And now we know some things about this, this polynomial. So let me, let me think about this. Let us think about this. So you know f of 1 is going to be negative 12, so that's going to be when x is 1, that's when x is 2, that's when x is 3, this, this part is when x is 5, this part is when x is 6, that's when x is 7. I'm just going in order. And you may argue it doesn't have to be go, it doesn't have to go like this. You can instead of curving like that, you can curve the opposite way and go like this. And one thing you may think of is that now y intercept is going to be reversed. If your y intercept was negative 12 in this case, and then your y intercept is going to be 12 in this case because everything is being reversed. It doesn't have to be 12. I'm just making it up. And realize you want to find the absolute value of y intercept. You want to find absolute value of y intercept. So it does not matter which form you use. You can either use the form that's curving like this, or you can use the form that's curving like that. In the end, absolute value of y intercept is going to come out to be the same thing because y intercept of these two different possible forms are just going to be opposite each other. Okay, so we can just focus on this graph, we can just focus on this graph, and we can try to find f of 0, and how can we? So let's try to do so. So let's write down what we know. We know f of 2 has to be equal to f of 3, is equal to f of 7, which is equal to 12, and you know f of 1 is equal to f of 5, which is equal to f of 6, is negative 12. Of course, if you're going by this graph, then that's going to be negative 12 and positive 12. And in the end, you should get the same result. Anyway, now what can we do with this? Well, we 
it is easy for us to construct a cubic. It's easy to construct a cubic. Construct a cubic if we know if we know the x intercepts, if we know the zeros. What do I mean by that? If you know cubic has x intercepts or zeros of 1, 2, and 3, you know the cubic is going to be in the form a times x minus 1 times x minus 2 times x minus 3 because a x intercept is going to be 1, 2, and 3. So if we can somehow construct a new cubic using using these facts such that we know its x intercept maybe we can construct that cubic and relate that to f of x what do i mean by that well look at this part f of 2 is equal to f of 3 is equal to f of 7 is equal to 12 think of g of x being f of x minus 12. So whatever g is going to be is whatever f is and you're going to take away 12. And that's telling you g of 2 is equal to g of 3, not f, g of 3. g of 3 is going to equal to g of 7 or equal to 0 because now you're going to take away 12 from f. And now you know what g of x is going to be. You know because g has x-intercepts of 2, 3, and 7, we can use the same reasoning we just made. You know g of x is going to be x minus 2 times x minus 3 times x minus 7. And of course, you're going to multiply that by some, some coefficient a. Okay, so that's interesting. And wh what's this telling us? Well, we want to find absolute value of f of 0. So let's try to find f of 0. So looking at this equation, you know f of x, f of x is equal to g of x plus 12. Be just rearranging this equation. And that's telling you f of 0, the quantity we wish to find, is equal to g of 0 plus 12. And what is g of 0? Well, g of 0 is when all of these x's are 0, and you're going to get negative 2 times negative 3 times negative 7, and that's negative 42. So that's negative 42, and you're multiplying by a, plus 12. So you know that's equal to f of 0. And you realize we made g of x using this first first equation that f of 2 is equal to f of 3 is equal to f of 7 is equal to 12. So we can make another cubic using the next equation. So let's do that. So now let's make h of x is equal to f of x plus 12. So this minus 12 is going to become 0. That's telling us h of 1 is equal to h of 5 is equal to h of 6 which is equal to 0. So now we can find h of x. So h of x is going to be sum a times... Uh, let me show you why this a has to be the same a as this one. I'm going to show you that soon. But let me write down the equation first. So x minus 1 times x minus 5 times x minus 6. And from this, we know, we know f of x f of x is equal to h of x minus 12, just rearranging this equation. So we can now find the equation for f of 0. That's equal to h of 0 minus 12. And you may say, why is this a for g of x and this a for h of x have to be the same constant? Why do they have to be the same? Realize that coefficient, coefficient, coefficient of x cubed x cubed in f of x has to be constant. You cannot change the coefficient of x cubed in f of x. And realize the coefficient of x cubed in f of x is going to come directly, is going to be a. Because just looking at this equation, f of x is equal to g of x plus 12. The only x cubed term you're going to have is ax cubed. That's getting, you're getting that by multiplying a by all of these x's. So for, for this case, you know coefficient of x cubed is a. And for this case, you have to get the same coefficient. And the only way the coefficient of x cubed is going to be the same as it should is if we make the coefficient of h the same as coefficient of g. So you know this a is going to stay the same between g and h. And now let's use this equation to find f of 0. That's going to be plugging 0 into all of these x's. Negative 1 times negative 5 times negative 6, which is negative 30 times a. And you want to take away 12. 
and realize f of 0 is equal to this quantity, and f of 0 is also equal to this quantity. So now we can find a. So we know negative 42a plus 12 is equal to negative 30a minus 12, and it doesn't take too long to solve this equation and you're going to get a is equal to 2. And now you can find f of 0 by substituting a equals to 2 into either of these equations. And let me just plug it in into this one. You're going to get negative 60 minus 12 or negative 72. So we know f of 0, negative 72. And if you use negative 12 and positive 12, you should have gotten positive 72. Either way, absolute value of f of 0 absolute value of f of 0 is going to be absolute value of negative 72 or 72, which is going to be simply 72. And because it's an Amy question, I'm going to write the answer as 072.